Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we are continuing on in series 11 as it kicked off earlier this week and like we said at the beginning of the week to kick us off into series 11, we are putting together a bunch of sample teams but rather than put them all together at the beginning of the week, we're doing them split up over this first week and doing a team a day. It gives us a chance to kind of give you the sample team and also see the team being piloted as well as allowing me to kind of give you a bit of a, a background into it to give you a bit of a better understanding of how to use it so here today we are with the shadow rider calorex one of my favorite restrictors that we've had in sword and shield and we went for a bit more of an offensive one today we've seen trends where we've seen substitute played on it uh, we've seen choice specs choice scarf played on it as well but we're going with a pretty standard one with a life orb variant i believe it gives you nice coverage with the mud shot and the expanded force obviously take advantage of the psychic train from indeed and then astral bra which is a signature attack and then when you pair it up next to the indeed you got the follow me support which is really useful and also the help and hand support when stacked with the life orb just is incredible so you can get some real momentum swings with something like shadow rider calorex you've got speed control and the team with whimsicott obviously that does conflict a little bit with the ndd but you just got to be smart about how you're leading with the team and trying to overlap those two pokemon you've got the tailwind support there the switcheroo which is really annoying for opposing teams to deal with especially if they click the dynamax and you switcheroo and go for an astral barrage that turn uh it can be pretty um frustrating to deal with if you lose your dynamax turn one and it gets rid of weakness policies and things like that we know the drill with the uh, switcheroo eject button we went with uh, dazzling gleam it gives a spread gets around redirection as well helps you better deal with things like urshifu that sometimes have things like club fairy things like indeedy with them uh, we've got incineroar gives you a nice switch in from calorex with that type synergy there that it's got um, and just a lot of disruption that incineroar can offer through intimidate snarl and part and shot and then we've got a bit more firepower on the team uh, we've got the uh, rapid strike water fighting type urshifu and um, that just kind of gives the team a bit more balance and firewater grass call with that that whimsical and incineroar and then rounding the team off nicely with Defiant Thunderous which again gives you a bit more firepower and you would say on the base of it you know the team does look pretty weak to uh, Trick Room but you've just got to approach those matches uh, carefully and hopefully we do come up against some hard Trick Room teams in today's episode and we can kind of go through how we would lead up against them but without further ado friends there's a the rental team we'll have a couple of games with the team now as we always do and then we'll wrap up with the rental at the end of the episode so I hope you enjoyed today's episode and without further ado let's get into game one. Okay Okay, first up today we have an Urshifu, Colossal, Dragapult, Incineroar, Zashin and Among Us team. I can see this team popping up quite a bit on the ladder as we go forward. Uh, it is your pretty standard kind of uh, G-Max Colossal Zashin build. Uh, there isn't the Rillaboom in here, but you've got the inclusion of Among Us kind of taking that spot up. It offers different kind of things. You haven't got the grassy terrain, of course, but you do have the redirection and that spore support and a little bit of uh, an extra buffer against Trick Room, I guess, uh, that the Rillaboom doesn't kind of give you so indeed calorex is a lead it's kind of going to kind of not too bad with the redirection there and then the ability to kind of just throw a big max quick out onto the colossal turn one gets rid of that and then the momentum kind of swings from that that point on for us really we need incineral in this match and probably whimsicott as well because i'm putting a lot i'm kind of pegging a lot on um calorex being able to kind of carry us through this one but i, I do feel with the redirection support we should be should be all right i think so we'll see we'll see how we get on in this first one today like i've said before when we come up against colossal teams they're always difficult to kind of um to kind of lead against because you can you can get punished pretty hard pretty quickly if you lead wrong against these teams but we are seeing urshifu and dragapult come out from my opponent now this is the rapid strike urshifu so we're in a good spot where we can just astro barrage here we don't even need to max to be honest we can just astro barrage and, and redirect and then we're we're in a good position the, the urshifu is likely gonna have uh the sash there um and we may even see it switch out um it'll be interesting to see what the dragapult does just to check it is the water one um but yeah we can just astro barrage and i think yeah just go for for the redirection here there's no reason why not we'll outspeed the dragapult it may be sashed um but we are seeing it retreat so i'm going to keep it for later on this game incineral uh does take the field so they're going to try and get some damage onto this indeedy but we are 
bold max defense so we should be able to take a surge and strike if that's what they go for don't see that just see that protect come out from the air to save itself a little bit of um damage this turn but the one thing that we've got going for us this next turn is um you're probably going to see the Urshifu switch out, I would imagine. Maybe the Urshifu switch out, maybe not as well. But that Incineroar now in a really awkward spot where um, a Max Quake is going to pick up the knockout against it. Where we can just go Max Quake. We could redirect if we want, or we could just help in hand um, and take the Surgeon Strikes from the Urshifu, you know. Um, Look, the th the, I think we re re redirect because the thing is, the Incineroar. If it if it if it doesn't max, then it's going for Snarl. Then we will take it down with a Max Quake, so we don't need that help and hand boost. If it maxes, we'll probably miss it. We need the help and hand boost, but regardless, it's going to go into the Indeedy anyway. Uh, I do feel like the should be going to switch out, but we're not seeing that. Um, we're going to see the search and strikes come out, but we have pulled the trigger on our max. I don't really see there's much reason not to at this point. Um, we could have sat and just went for the helping hand mud shot, of course. That is always an option, but get rid of the incineral, which is going to be one of the bigger threats to this team. It's always going to be quite nice anyway. Um, I think before they can get the colossal on the field, especially next to the Urshifu, they really need to be able to deal with this indeed pretty well. So, there's our first Grimnir boost. And yeah, the Surgeon Strike. So probably better off in the long run doing the, the, the redirect play, to be honest. Just to save um, Calyrex taking any unnecessary damage. Because you can see how well like, Ndidi takes that here. So what's coming back in? Is it the Dragapult or is it going to be the Colossal this time? I don't know if it will be the Colossal. I mean, both are pretty threatened at this stage, uh, is the Dragapult. You could imagine the Dragapult probably is, um, probably is sashed. It's just whether or not we want to go after the Urshifu here. It, the Urshifu is sashed as well, that's the problem, you know? Um, the one thing we could be, we could be quite cheeky and go for something like Max Guard and Expanding, Expanding Force just to break sashes on things but it does uh, I think that's not a bad play because like what's the Dragon Ball gonna do like Phantom Force or Dragon Darts I think it's probably Dragon Darts ooh 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 what are we seeing what are we seeing Max is it gonna be the Dragapult probably the Ursh is it the Urshifu no it's the Dragapult okay We're gonna go Max Airstream that would be pretty bad if it goes Max Airstream into DD that's pretty bad but you've got to be worried about us going Max Phantasm into Dragapult at the same time as well, because we naturally outspeed. But we could put up, be putting ourselves on the back foot here by doing this. He's going Airstream into the DD, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we've just locked ourselves out of this game, really, by doing that. Like, unnecessarily thinking that they're going to just Max the Colossal. Okay. It's just got incredibly harder. But did it really? Because we've got Whimsicott to come in. So we've got that we've got that um We've got the tailwind, so we can just throw that up. So we're not in the worst of spots. And I think there is the argument where we could we you know here we will probably want to uh attack into the ocean because the Dragapult is likely to protect, but we know that the Dragapult's not got a sash now, so yeah, it is going to max guard. They're going to try and get a Surgeon Strikes off into um, Calyrex here. It's just always a risk. Like, if we don't attack the Dragapult here and it does attack, then we lose Calyrex, you know? So, um, it's not ideal. This damage is definitely not ideal. But we do have Astral Barrage back next turn. So, we, you know, at the same time, we're not really pushed. For, for options because we've got Dazzling Gleam, we've got Astro Barrage, it's going to clear the field and then we've got a Zashin in the back to deal with which is kind of alright, you know, so. 
Like the worst case scenario here is Aqua Jet from uh, the Urshifu into our Whimsicott, activate our eject button, <laughs> um, and then Astral Barrage missing the knockout onto the Dragapult. But we are plus one, so I would imagine we'll still probably get it regardless. Yeah, so you can see, do take the Dragapult down. Has the Dragapult survived? No, 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 it's gone. It's gone. Take the Urshifu down to its sash. And there it yeah. But the, the, the doesn't gleam. I mean, Moonblast would have worked here anyway. But we do get that Grimnir boost, um, and then the Dazzle are going to be able to wrap this one up for us. And then, like I say, there's probably uh, Zashin in the back, so not going down the Colossal route on this one. But we're in a decent enough spot. It's always worth, like you know, when you're playing the Calyrex team, like keeping your Wimmy in the back at certain points because you know, as soon as you lose that Indeedy redirection, like. Your opponent's always going to be gunning for trying to get uh, you th their speed control set up. So you, you're always going to be able to have that. Once you redirect goals, you're going to have that option of having your own speed control to kind of bring in and, and take advantage of. So, uh, I mean, we just dazzle. Dazzle and Astro Barrage. We're kind of all right at this point, really. And there we go. Battle cancelled. And we pick up a victory to kick us off with today, which is always nice. Um with a new team uh, and what we'll do is friends will jump straight into game two and see if we can continue this streak on okay next up today we have a Groudon, Venusaur, Reggie, Alecky, Charizard, Grimstar and Umbrian team so very similar to the one that we ran earlier in the week and going to be very difficult for Calyrex to function here because of the two Pokemon in particular at the bottom of the team, the Grimmsnarl and the, the Umbrian. We need to really remove those to kind of free up Calyrex to, to be able to, to function well um, in, in this matchup. The Umbrian is so frustrating to deal with because of things like Yawn. Probably going to have to leave Wimmy Thunderous to be honest and like double in, maybe double in on the, the Umbrian if we do see it. Uh, the Tailwind will give us a bit of an advantage against the, the Alecky if we do see it. I think Incineroar in the back to mitigate the Groudon and then we'll round off with Calyrex. I always feel like this matchup is very difficult for this team, uh, especially with the inclusion of the Umber in there. It just kind of cuts down the ability for something like Calyrex to really perform very well. And then when you've got the Grim Snarl on top of that, it becomes very difficult very very quickly. I don't think I'm gonna max here. I think I'm just gonna dazzling gleam and I'm gonna super power just to get damage on that Umbrian. Because it's likely we might yeah, and there's always a possibility with Grimmsnarl that you could see something like a jack button with trick, which you never really want again to get caught out from, you know, with, with Thunderous in particular. We do see the reflect come out, get some decent damage with the dazzling gleam, and there's the super power gonna do some nice damage, but the, the foul play in return is gonna hurt. I think they go for Yawn here, though, of everything else. So we do see Citrus Berry activate on the Umbrians. It's going to get a little bit of health back. Ooh, just go straight for the foul play. Into the Whimsicott. Interesting. Okay, that is interesting. Um, let me just see that eject button activate. So we can get Incineroar onto the field. We can mitigate what that Grimstall does the next turn. We obviously can't really do too much to the Umbrian, but we could also attack into the Umbrian as well. Um, and just flare blitz into it. And then switch into Whimsicott. I think that's not a bad play. Because I think we have to target down the Umbrian pretty hard in these games. Like, we cannot like just allow it to stick stick around we got rid of the citrus berry which is good it's probably got moonlight as well so we have to watch out for when the sun comes onto the field um and i don't feel like switching whimsicott in here is really too bad a play because the net the, the drawbacks of doing this are really negligible where we're resetting the the drop from thunderous from that super power we're also kind of switching in a good switch here you know uh the thunder waving into okay and there's a yawn which uh, which is fine because I think the next turn we just switch straight back into Thunderous again because if they try to Thunder Wave oof, find that Reflect we're doing like nothing nothing like Umbrian is an absolute tank now, there's very little chance that they go for the, the foul play into the Women's Cup but saying that the, the choices here have been pretty pretty obscure up to now so we kind of got to, can't, can't expect anything really, you know. So we may see a far play into the Whimsicott, which is now the Thunderous. 
We'll see. Umbrian now retreating now. And uh, Charizard going to come onto the field, which is, which is all right. It's not the worst, not the best either. As the light screen comes out from the Grimmsnarl. The one thing about that speed control the Grimmsnarl's got access to, though, is it's not going to be able to really affect Thunderous. It hasn't got scary face. Um, and if it goes for a spirit break, it's boosting, boosting our. Uh, and we may see the sun come in, like Groudon come in on that Grimmsnarl slot, which makes me want to go for a parting shot there. Um, do we just go max lightning? Or do we go max airstream? Or do we not max at all? No, I think we do max. I think max. Mm, they're going to blast burn, I think. I think Groudon comes in and I think they blast burn. Wow, okay, they're catching us out completely. They're bringing Groudon in, so they're mitigating. Yeah, okay, that's a nice play from my opponent. That is a nice play. <coughs> Baiting us in completely. Okay. Wow. Well, at least we get the parting shot out so we can get something like Calyrex onto the field because I think Calyrex, Thunderous as a combination, even though there's the threat of the Umbrian coming onto the field, um, gives us a bit more firepower to kind of clear things off the field, you know? So, let's see. I'm wasting one max turn here. We'll get the parting shot off. I guess the big drawback is if they spirit break into the Incineroar, which kind of puts me off bringing like Calyrex onto the field. Um, well, I want to bring like Wimmy on rather than the Calyrex, because Calyrex is so important to us. But also, like every member at this point is important to us, so we can't really be too picky in the Spirit Break, not going to be into the Thunderous, yeah. So it's better that we preserve Calyrex for later on in this game. We get the special attack run, but that's kind of by the by. I think we switch Wimmy straight out to Incinero, get another Intimidate onto the field. Um, could max Darkness into Groudon, it's not going to do very much. Airstream as well. That's probably going to help us a bunch. Max Airstream into Grimmsnarl, I think. And we also get then then get the speed boost onto Incineroar, which would then allow us to get you know a quicker parting shot potentially out onto that Groudon uh, as well. At the same time as um, you know putting it down to minus two to help. And two Airstream should get the um, should get the Grimmsnarl. I'm not seeing the Groudon max here. So the Grim's not in range to go down this next turn, which is which is what we want really, you know. Um, and the sun being up as well. We're ticking away these turns of the, the screens that my opponent's got. Uh, there is the sword stance. So we, we kind of inclined to go max airstream and then parting shot onto the ground on to kind of reset those drops. Uh, even though it could just go for a sword stance once again the next turn. Which is not ideal. So we'll see. What they decide to do, because Sword Dance here, you know, you're in a pretty good position where you can click that Sword Dance button again, you know, you're not in any sort of worry about getting knocked out. The only thing that you would say you may want to avoid is like fake out disruption. Um, but Grim's not switching out, so whatever comes in. Uh, this is useful damage, this is all useful damage, because that Umbrian, like I say, if the Umbrian goes down, um, I think what we'll do is we'll switch or we'll parting shot out on the ground on get rid of those boosts get whimsicott onto the field they're probably going to go max uh, rockfall i would imagine with ground on into thunderous they're still going to hurt there's the airstream is it going to be enough I don't think so Oosh, not quite not quite but we can get whimmy out It's a parting shot into the ground, which is super useful. Is it going to go max quake though into um, into Incineroar? Maybe to get that special defense boost, knowing that Calyrex is in the back. Potentially, I don't know. Max quake, yeah. So women might take this. They do. 
Uh, no. But I guess at the same time, it gives us a free switch back into Incineroar to get that Intimidate onto the Groudon again, which is always nice. Um, Because I think we want to hold off bringing Calyrex right into the very end if we can. The problem is now, obviously, that the uh, we haven't got Tailwind. Uh, we aren't going to be able to get the jump on Groudon. It is going to be able to get another Max Quake off now, which is not ideal. Uh, but a Wild Charge will be able to get the Umbreon. I've got to say, a Wild Charge should be enough to get the Umbreon. We'll try and get a Parting Shot into the Groudon, because they may... They may decide. Um, is a wild charge going to be enough? I'd hate it not to be. I'm kind of just super powering just to make sure that we get it because I'd hate to miss the knockout onto the Umbrian. Like, wild charge might just whiff it, you know, with the reflector. And depending where the Groudon goes, like if they go after the Thunderous here, that's probably better for us because then we get the parting shot. No, they go on Max Quake. Okay, that kind of locks. Thunders in place now to um it's not ideal. It's not ideal. And that special defense boost that the Groudon's got kind of under its belt as well. Makes it difficult to deal with. So the next job is getting rid of getting rid of the um the Grim Snarl, which we can do, I think. Ah, oh, it's a minus one. Huh. <laughs> is a minus one. Wild Charge going to be enough? I don't know. Behind a Reflect. I don't feel like it probably is going to be enough. We could fly. But the, the, the thing that we have to avoid now is the Thunder Wave from the Grim Snarl. They're going to Max Quake again with Groudon into Calyrex. They are minus one at this point. Yeah, the Thunder Wave. Okay. But it does leave Thunderous a lot. Oh, we just miss. We just miss. We just miss. Yeah, and there's a Max Quake for the third time. Okay. Um, okay, well, we take that. I think we'll take a Precipice Blades. It's just we want... Uh, the Thunder Wave is what we needed to avoid. Which is, yeah, the, the, the worst. So the sun does fade. Reflect wears off. So they got the option now. Do they reflect or do they... Um, hmm. I think we Astral Barrage and we Foul Play. I think we got a Foul Play. I think they got a Press with Blades. They may go Rock Slide though. To get the Thunderous and try that Power Flinch. Probably our best attack though against it. Wow, okay. So foul play actually gonna be really useful this next turn. That might be enough for us to actually win the sword stance. <sighs> we needed that to we needed we needed that to hit. We needed that to hit. We really did. Um because now Yeah, we need that to hit because now foul play is not going to be enough. But I mean, they're kind of, they are torn. Like, they have to go like Rock Slide or Precipice Blades. Yeah, but they get the Reflect up now, which is, yeah, just uh, even more annoying. Um, they are plus one. So, Precipice could miss. Rock Slide could miss, but neither do. Um, can we get the Astral Barrage? The thing is, like, the Charizards to come in. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> right, well, we are ending this on a loss, but it was a good game nonetheless, but sometimes the RNG just doesn't go your way, and uh, that is that. So, as I said, it's a pretty hard matchup, but I think we managed it not too bad. Just, if we, if we, if the... Got a higher damage roll on that Grim Snarl. That would have definitely helped us. Uh, we maybe would have been better going for the Wild Charge against the, the Umbra, and then we wouldn't have the attack drop, and then we could have probably got the Grim Snarl, but that's by the by, and then obviously the RNG kind of continues on from there. So we'll round up, friends, with a rental card for today's episode. Okay, friends, here is today's rental team. If you do try it out, I hope you have a lot of fun with it. Like I say, and I have said throughout this episode, 
The teams with Umbreon on them and the Dark types do make it very difficult for this team to function. So this is why we may see a drop off or very low usage of something like Calyrex at the beginning of the format. And it'll be those teams that can deal with the Umbreons and the other Dark threats effectively with Calyrex uh, that are going to really start to see a big surge. So that's the thing to try and um, build and implement into your teams uh, to get around those threats because they are going to be everywhere. Sun teams are going to be everywhere. Umbrian is going to be everywhere um, and it's going to make it difficult to kind of function with these teams. So that's what you kind of want to look for that key to unlock uh, the success against those teams because they've not just got the Umbrian there that's a real threat. They've got all that fire and kind of sun support behind them as well as the ground on which makes things pretty obnoxious to deal with at times and and you know you saw in that last game there it's tiny margins can make a big difference but i hope if you do try this team out i do believe shadow rider calyrex is still a good shout in this format it's still a very powerful pokemon um but if you do try it out i hope you have a lot of fun with it leave your comments down below let me know your thoughts on today's episode and team and uh, we'll be back tomorrow rounding off our sample teams on friday with our and a Veltal team. So looking forward to that one. Hope you are as well. Make sure you do check it out and uh, we'll wrap it up there, friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great rest of your day. Take care of yourselves and I'll catch you all for the next one. So until then, take care and bye-bye.